Sometimes it's the problems faced by developers or programmers which will introduce new features. Same is the case with arrays. Let me explain you what I mean. Take a look at this program. What we're having is we're having the salary details of 10 different employees of a company. For example, Ron earns $10 million and Krish earns $12 million. Obviously, no paying job would pay you so much whatsoever. But for example's sake, let's assume so. Now, let's say I wanted to find out the average salary of all these employees. The formula that we need to use is sum of all the salaries of all the employees divided by the number of employees. So I would do Ron plus Ben plus Liber plus Krish plus blah 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 divided by and then the count 10. Let me just make sure it is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Sorry, it's 11. So here is the problem. It is pretty tiresome for me to write. And it's even more tiresome for you to listen. Also, let's say we have some hundreds of employees here. And we need to give a proper count here, which is pain-taking process. If I give an incorrect count, then that would yield a very bad result. So how do we solve this problem with arrays? Let me pull pen and paper and let's see a real-time example of arrays. All right, let's say you own a transportation business and you specialize in transporting cars. So now you got a requirement where you need to transport 10 cars. Now we have a source and destination which is where you need to transport the cars to. Now you'll start by sending all the cars on the road. Car C1, C2, C3. Now the problem is it's pretty difficult to keep track on each and every car, make sure it is safe, take care of all the fuel expenses and potential physical damage to the car, etc. There are a lot of things to be considered. And it's pretty hard to manage. What if one of the driver just goes away with the car, not taking to its destination? Pretty tough. So how do we solve this problem? Instead of hiring 10 different drivers and managing 10 different cars, you would just hire one truck. Let's call this truck as truck T. And this truck has a certain capacity. Let's say it has a capacity to hold 12 cars. And each segment or each section will be identified with, a, with an index starting from zero. So the first section can be accessed with zero index and the second with one, the third with two, the fourth with three. Now once you load all the cars into this truck and once it reaches to the destination, you can pull a certain car using the index. For example, if you say T0, that would pull the car inside this segment. If you say T3, that would pull the car in the fourth segment. So that's exactly what arrays in Java. Let me go a little bit more technical into this. When you say int a equals 10, as I've already mentioned, this would create a memory size of 4 bytes and store the value of 10 in this. And this memory location can be accessed with an identifier called a in this case. And if you have 10 another integer variables, you would create 10 another memory locations, each of 4 bytes. But whereas if you create an array, it would just create one memory location, one big chunk of memory location, something like this. And whatever the size that you specify while creating the array is the number of segments it contains. And each of these segments can be accessed with an index starting from 0. Now, if you want to pull the value inside one of the index, you would access it using the index. If you want to pull the fourth element, you would use index 3. Now, let's apply this on our code and let's see how we can solve the problem. Let's get rid of all the code in here and start writing a fresh code. 
Now, the way we declare and initialize a variable is, by the way, we didn't talk about declaration and initialization. We will in a while. But to declare and initialize a variable, we say int run equals 10. Now, to declare and initialize an array, all you would do is to add a square bracket here. Now, we can't give the value 10 here. We need to use a keyword called new and then the data type, which in this case it's int. And then remember I talked about segments? That's what you need to give here. You need to tell Java how many segments of memory would you be requiring. Let's say 10. Now we have an array created. We have 10 memory locations created. All we need to do is insert values in each one of the segments of an array. So to insert a value in the first index, what we need to do is you just say ron at zero index. Let's change the name ron to something meaningful. Let's call it array. Let me change the name here as well. Array of zero index equals 10. Array of one equals 20. In order to save your time, let me just finish all the typing and then I'll get back. Okay, here we are. Now all you would do to find the average salary is this. Now please note that you may not be able to understand some of these instructions. When we caught the concepts of control statements, classes and methods, you would better understand these equations. We'll definitely be getting back on this example and we'll make you understand. But just for the explanation's sake, what we're doing here is we're just looping through each and every individual item in this array and then we are adding each other. By the end, we're having the sum of all the elements. And in here, what we're doing is we're getting the sum divided by the length of an array. Going back on the problem statement we had, we had to count each and every individual variable and uh, type the exact count here. But in here, you can just say array.length. So this would just take the length of the array itself. So in here, we're just printing the average. Let's try to run the program. Cool, it displayed the average salary. Now the key thing to note here is we gave the size as 10. If you just fill only 5 of them, we would still be having 10 memory locations. So when we do array.length, it actually gets the size of an array which is 10, regardless of number of segments that were filled. So that's one of the primary disadvantage of using arrays. You have to know upfront the size of the array that you're going to use. Otherwise, most of the memory will be wasted. The, the point that I want you to take away from this is, let's say we have thousands of employees. You don't have to type in each and every variable. Instead, you can just have the similar lines of code which would do the magic. This is just a one simple example of array, but this does not actually explain the real advantage of arrays. To know more on arrays, uh, we need to cover the concepts of classes, objects, methods. Also, we need to go through the control statements to understand better. But for now, this should suffice. Now let's quickly talk about declaration and initialization. By the way, we can further shrink this code and reduce the number of lines by using curly braces. So instead of giving a fixed number of 10 and entering each and every value in this manner, we can just simply get rid of this 
and get rid of this as well and simply use curly braces and give the numbers or the values separated by comma something like this 10 20 30 40 50 now the size of array dependent on number of values that you give here now this statement makes more sense and this would never go wrong now let's try to run the program again Cool, we got the average. So it's working. Okay, now let's see declaration and initialization. As I've already mentioned, we have two different types of data types. One is primitive, other one is non-primitive or object type. In case of primitive data type, like int equals 10, this is the declaration part and if we assign some value to it that's called initialization so when we say int a we will create a memory location with a as identifier and we would have a default value of zero regardless of initialization so in so even if you don't say a equals 10 or something we would still have a memory location created but that's not the case with non-primitive data types for example in case of array if you say int square brackets array this is just a declaration of array of integers this would just tell compiler that we're creating an array of integers Unless you use a keyword called new, no actual memory will be allocated. So you need to say array equals new int of certain size. Then this would just create 10 memory locations and each memory location would be of size 4 bytes. So this part is called declaration and this is called initialization. Now let's go back to our workbench and see a few other examples. Now in this example what we're doing is we're just sorting all the values of an array in ascending order. So the function, the method, by the way method is synonymous to functions in C language. And once again we'll talk about methods and classes and more specifically on this operator over here the dot but for now just assume just think of this as a function in C language and it takes some value and do some processing in this case it just takes array and it uh, sorts all the values in it looks like our list is already sorted let's shuffle them a little bit maybe let's say 40 uh, 10 or 20 and would give 99 here and maybe 300 let's save the file and run the program compile the program and then run it we have the output in sorted order great let's take a look at one more example Now in this example we are using binary search to find the index of a certain value. Let's say we wanted to find the index of the value 40. The expected result is 2 since this is the third element that's 0, 1, 2. Let's try to run the program.
we got the output that we were expecting. Now, like I said, you may not be able to understand some of these instructions. We'll definitely be covering all this, all these concepts, and our, I'm sure that I'm going to make you feel comfortable with this. The methods like this are all predefined in Java. They come with the standard edition. In order to know more on what sort of manipulations you can do with arrays, you can take a look at this link. And it's pretty hard and especially time consuming for you to go through each and every function provided by arrays. I gave you two examples. Use those examples to experiment with methods offered by arrays.